Hey Judy, welcome to the podcast. Hello Barbara, lovely to be here, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really pleased, I'm so excited about this because we're going to have a really good chat because well LinkedIn's your speciality because you're the LinkedIn lady but um, LinkedIn's both of our playgrounds isn't it, it's where we tend to hang out, it's where we meet we met um so we're gonna have a really good chat about LinkedIn today but first before we do that I'd love to just know a little bit more about you how did you get into this world of being the LinkedIn lady yeah indeedy um yeah common question because I only do LinkedIn and I think that's really important I'm not a social media expert I'm actually one of those people who don't like social media at all so I'm always saying LinkedIn it's not a social media platform Um, But my background is uh, B2B marketing. I used to work for an IT and a telecoms company, and my job was generating leads for the sales team. So I have that sort of new business development marketing background. And um, when I left full-time employment and I was looking at what else I wanted to do, I was really keen to get into online marketing. And um, I was doing, you know, WordPress websites and things like that for a bit. And then somebody said to me, what about this LinkedIn? Now, I always say my love affair with LinkedIn started on Valentine's Day 2006. Can't believe I created an account on Valentine's Day. Um, but I hadn't looked at it when I was employed as a marketing manager. It hadn't been on my radar as a tool for generating leads at all. But once I became self-employed and had to find my own leads, I suddenly realized, actually, wow, this is an absolutely superb platform. So um, at the end of 2012, I I pivoted, like, you know, a lot of people have done over COVID, haven't they? I pivoted then and just started doing LinkedIn. Um, So I am celebrating this year year as 10 years as a LinkedIn lady. And um, quite early on, somebody said to me, oh, you're that LinkedIn lady, aren't you? And I went, (laughs) that's it. Yeah, that's it. And it's just a marriage between that new business development and online marketing. And it was just the perfect fit for me and I've been doing it ever since (laughs) ever since amazing so we're going to really dive into to LinkedIn and I love hearing people's Mm. origin stories and find out what what actually brought them to where they are um because you're right you because you don't do other platforms it's great to specialize in just one thing isn't it I mean it's fantastic for your brand but it's great for for us to have this conversation and learn more about it so most of our our listeners are business owners just like you and me maybe they might run bigger businesses, might be leaders of, of uh, bigger businesses. But LinkedIn tends to be a, a shared playground, a common playground, if you like. But something that you just said, which I scribbled down because I'm really curious about, you said it's not a social media platform. What is it then? Because when oh. we talk social media, we talk Instagram, we talk uh, maybe TikTok, we think Facebook. What is LinkedIn then? It's a fantastic question. And I love this because I think people don't always understand what LinkedIn can do for you. They see it as social media and everybody gets really caught up about posting. Oh, we should post, post, post. But actually, if you step back and think about, A, what do I want LinkedIn to do for me? And B, what actually is LinkedIn? It really helps focus how you then approach LinkedIn. So for me, I always say that first and foremost, you know, there's now 35 million profiles on LinkedIn in the UK alone. 35 million like there's masses of people absolutely masses and in effect it's one big database and LinkedIn gives us the tools to drill down and find the people we want to meet for free so everything I talk about you can do on the free version of LinkedIn there's no need to have to pay for LinkedIn at all Um, but we can drill down and one of the things when I was a marketing manager I used to spend a lot of my budget buying in data And that's one of the things that blew me away about LinkedIn because it's all there at my fingertips. It's just brilliant. So exciting. So first, because it's a database, it's also then the closest thing to -to face-to-face networking. And you've already mentioned that actually that's where we met. We met on LinkedIn and you can really get to know people without ever having met them through LinkedIn by having those conversations. So I always go, you know, for people who go networking, see LinkedIn as another networking group. Your profile represents you as the you know, the physical you going into a room, your headline is like your 60 seconds, the people you connect with, connect with other people you're networking with, so very important, you know, who is it you want to network with, and then the conversations, what you post, but also who you engage with, and the comments and things like that, that you put on LinkedIn, are the conversations you're having, 
So, you know, a lot of people will tell me that they generate leads and opportunities through networking, word of mouth referrals, you know, 95% of the time they are the top two answers. So LinkedIn is brilliant to help support those um, activities. So, you know, if, if you spend a lot of time networking, it's very easy for people to understand, okay, right, LinkedIn's also another networking group. And then commit, it's like, <clears throat> that's why I say to people, if you go networking, if you pay to be a member of a networking group, never go, you're never going to get any leads or opportunities. And, and so with LinkedIn, if you think about, right, okay, I'm going to be active on LinkedIn. I'm going to commit to using it. Um, and then, you know, people can then start to see an impact um, on what they're doing. So it's a database. It's the closest thing to face-to-face -face networking you can get online. And the biggie for me and the most important is that the fact that it's a website. Your LinkedIn profile, your LinkedIn company page will get you found on Google. And, you know, LinkedIn is free to host or the SO is done for you. So why not have a profile that talks about you, your expertise, how you help, what you do for your clients rather than your online CV? Because it gets you found on Google and on LinkedIn. And I just love that. I've got so many examples of being able to find people from a Google search. And what comes up is their LinkedIn profile, often not their website. So. Yes, I, I completely agree. That's happened to, to me before as well, where I've been searching for somebody, their LinkedIn profile comes up and it feels when their LinkedIn profile comes up, it feels they feel reachable, like they feel like they're you're able to get in contact with them easier rather than go through another block of their website and trying to find the contact details Correct. and all the rest. Absolutely. so much get in touch with them. So it's well worth it. And oh, you know what? I was When you were writing, I was scribbling loads of things down because I'm <laughs> that, that little bit you, there was so much gold but the thing that I kind of underlined was see it as a, a networking group and that in itself is a complete mindset shift isn't it when we don't see it as a, a social media platform or just another social media platform but a networking group it doesn't feel anywhere near as scary does it it, it doesn't, doesn't feel like we have to it doesn't feel as noisy do you know what uh, I mean by exactly, that exactly I do exactly and and I think because people can understand a what websites are and b what networking is uh, for those that go networking you already know what that is I mean you wouldn't go to a networking event wearing you know with a pint of beer unless it's that sort of beverage <laughs> networking but do you know what I mean you know you when you go networking face to face with people you will put on your you will present yourself in the right way wouldn't you you would if you're a suited and booted type of person you do that if you're more relaxed it, you, do you know what I mean you will that you would um uh, uh, present yourself in a way that that particular networking group works yes. and that's what we're doing on LinkedIn we're waiting to present ourselves but we wouldn't go in like with wedding dresses or you know selfies and all that kind of stuff you know we would go in and you know what would what kind of conversations would we have well we don't just chuck business cards at people and walk off do we we build relationships we ask questions you know, do, oh, have you been here before? What do you do? We try to get in, find that rapport, don't we, with people face to face and try yes. and build those conversations. And that's what we've got to try and do on LinkedIn. Obviously, we don't have the verbal cues, but we've got their profile. We've got the, what they're posting. We've got what we're posting. We're looking for those conversations that we can have and asking those questions. Mm. And it can be so powerful. It, it really can be so powerful. It's my favourite place to to hang out online, uh, and I, I, well, it goes without saying that it's yours. So, <laughs> if we were if we were looking for you know, try, wanting to use LinkedIn for a lead generation tool, just like networking, because we all like food, right? We 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 need money, which is fine. We know we're all business people, and that's okay that we have this conversation. Yes. So, when yeah. going on. LinkedIn how do we start to use it then so maybe we might have already got a profile we might not be getting the, the leads that you want you, we might be messing about on there playing feeling as though we're, we're kind of um what's the word that I'm looking for just Baffing. active <laughs> oh, that's a great one but we're going to use the, word, the, the illusion yeah. of being active uh, yeah. how can we start tidying that up yeah what do we need to be looking out for in terms of our profile and how do we actually go about finding people that we want to start conversations yeah. with I mean, because it sounds wonderful, doesn't it? I say, oh, it's great. We can go and find these people. And everybody's going, but how do you do that? How I'm do you spending time on LinkedIn and it's not working for me. What do I, where am I going wrong? You know, that's really common. Absolutely. Um, and that's so why I, I have a three-step process. And for me, the first step is always your LinkedIn profile because it's your 
shop friends, if people will make a decision about you very quickly. Again, if we remember that your profile is a website, if you do a Google search, you land on somebody's website, it doesn't have the information you want, they're gone. Same with LinkedIn, you've literally got seconds to grab somebody's attention. So it's not the most exciting or sexy place to start on LinkedIn, but it's absolutely essential because what we want to do is drive people to our LinkedIn profile. And if you haven't done that work on your LinkedIn profile first, and you you are people are coming to your profile, for me, I liken it to be sending people to an error page on your website because you've lost that opportunity. So you might be active on LinkedIn and posting and engaging. But actually, when they come to your profile, if they're going, oh, I'm not really sure, or, you know, if it's not really grabbing attention, you're not maximizing the activity and the time that you are spending. And that's one of the biggest challenges, because I know I've just said LinkedIn don't see it as a social media platform. That is the downside of it in so much that it is very easy to waste time on LinkedIn mm. doing all this ad hoc faffing activity. So, you know, for me, First and foremost, we need to think of your LinkedIn profile as your shop front, as you going into your networking group. How do you want to come across? Who is it you're talking to? Really, really important. You know, knowing your audience, as you'll know, Barbara, is so important across the board. It doesn't matter what marketing activity you're doing. You have to know who is it you're talking to? What are their pains and challenges? And what is it they need to know that will help them solve the solutions or the challenges, sorry, to the solutions that you um, offer? So I've got that right. But you, you know, how do you help solve their challenges? Basically, you know, we need to be able to use our profile to demonstrate empathy, to build that report, because we want people coming to our profile going, God, that's exactly what I need. I need to get in touch with this person. So like with the website, we want people um, to take some form of action. Because on websites, unless somebody takes takes some contacts to you in some way, you don't know that they've been. Yeah your website which is why I love LinkedIn so much because you know why try and get them to your website be where they are have a great profile and you can see who's coming to your profile which is wonderful so I do bang on a lot about profiles and and stuff and it is hard writing your own stuff it really is but if I say to people you know I don't know anyone who's got a CV on the front page of their website so forget about it being a CV if you've already spent time money and effort doing your website you've got all the content you need for your LinkedIn profile it doesn't need to be reinvented. You don't need to think of anything different. Um, if you haven't got a website, then LinkedIn can be your website. It was my website for the first seven years of my business. So yeah. I think, you oh, know. I love what you just said there, <laughs> because that's a, a, a bit of a, a block for so many people. I think, oh, I haven't got a website, so I can't be on LinkedIn. It can work instead of that, right? So and you can play with LinkedIn, get your messaging right. You can change LinkedIn in an instant if you can go and test this message. Is this working? Is this working? Is that working? And you can, you know, over time evolve and really sort of practice with those messages until you're ready to go and build your website. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah and I, I think that's so important. The one thing that I, I'm curious about as well is you've we've got the profile so you've populated your profile we'll come back to the your, your bio at the top your, what do we call that headline the headline um the headline what but is, are there any unused or kind of hidden secret profile bits that you think oh if more people could use that because that's gold and people don't tend to to use it as much what do you think is oh, there any because I, I don't I can't well think. for me the featured section I think is a very underused area just done so when somebody lands on your profile what they'll see is your header banner so that again is an underused feature that is a visual representation of what it is that you do you know that is like real estate because you know people will see your head the header banner at the top they'll see your profile photo your name and then your headline and then depending on what this creator mode not creator mode but then there is another feature called another section called featured which mm. I really love and I think can be absolutely um I I don't think is used properly by not I say properly it depends what you want to do but I think is not utilized as that fully as it could be yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was trying to say hey people aren't using it right but um yeah. so you know so first of all think about your header banner and you know you want to have more than the gray box that's all where your branding goes very important but you've got an opportunity here to sort of have some uh, words 
you put your, you know, your branding colors on there, maybe some words that says what you do. So on mine, it says get found, uh, get, you know, get found, get famous, get clients, because that's what I help people do. So you could have something that says what you do, especially if you've got something that isn't really very clear. You know, like if you've got a, a job, a company name, that I'm working with somebody, you know, if you, if I said to them, the company's called Enochian, do you know what they do? You don't. But if you could, yeah. you can use your header banner to say what it is that you do. You could have your contact details on there, for example, or, or if you've already got branding from your website, that all can go on LinkedIn. Good photo obviously goes without saying. Your photo, your name and your headline are your three most important fields on your LinkedIn profile because they follow you around LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And many people, so your name's your name, that's fairly um, straightforward. But your head photo, obviously, need, you need to be quite zoomed in a fair bit. People need to be able to recognize you. You know, you might have a great photo, but sometimes you're so zoomed out, you can't really see your face. It's your face that people need to see. So, you know, zoom in a bit on that. But your headline is is that elevator pitch, that bit that said if somebody's if your ideal client came up to you, you're absolute that you would go, oh, my goodness, came up to you and said, what do you do? What would you say? And yes. if you, no disrespect to any accountants listening here, but I'm just going to use that as an example. If you go, oh, I'm an accountant, you've instantly closed that conversation down. Because that is, we know what an accountant, oh, I've got an accountant, I don't need one. So that elevator pitch, and if you're going, if you liken that to that 60 seconds, which I hate doing 60 seconds at, at networking events, but, you know, if you stand up and do your 60 seconds and you go, my name is Judy Parsons and I'm X, Y, Z, everybody's switched off. They have. Yeah. You've got to go in with something like hard hitting kind of. Different. So you've got to understand the challenges that your audience, so I call it a benefit led statement. So you, mm. accountant is an important keyword and it needs to be in your profile for sure. But, you know, it could be something, uh, a proactive accountant helping you uh, pay less tax and have more fun. <laughs> yeah. It's just something that gets people to go, oh, oh, what's that? Yeah, yeah uh, just and that, that, that word, sorry, Judy, yeah. that word proactive accountant, all of a sudden that you might be thinking, oh, my accountant's not proactive or, oh, I'm looking for, I, I could, would like some, an accountant to be, you know, an active member of my team. It's just, it, it's an edge, isn't it? It just puts it, you ab above everybody else. It is. How is it? Because so, so a, lot, a lot of people will use the headline with their job title and company name. So if they are a business owner, they might go MD at XYZ company. Well, that makes you invisible. You know, yeah. it doesn't tell people what you do or how you help. Yeah. So when you're going around and being active on LinkedIn, people, you're just invisible because you're not standing out. Whereas if you say, I'm a proactive accountant that can help you pay less tax and have more fun or make more money or whatever it is that that person's challenges are, that's just going to be, oh, what is that? Oh, what is that? What is that? Yeah. Oh, I'm interested to learn more. And that's what we're trying to trying to do with our profiles, get people to go, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love that. Person. I love that. It's just sharpening these things up, isn't it? It's making it tighter. So, and that's what I really want to get um, the benefit of today and having this conversation is is making LinkedIn work for you, you know. Uh, and so you're on LinkedIn, you've got your profile, you've tightened things up. What do you do when you notice that people actually come and view your website, not your website, your LinkedIn profile. So you're noticing that you've got like, I don't know, 150 people viewed your, your, your profile this, does it say this week or this uh, month? 90 days, it served the, last, the last 90, 90 days. days. Yeah, yeah. What do, we, what do you do then? What, what do you do to capture those people? Or what's so that, for what's me, this, if you've done your profile right and the people are coming to your profile, Hopefully what you're getting is the right people, aka mm. the people that you want to get in front of and, and work with. And so when somebody looks at your profile, they're right ringing your doorbell, they're knocking on there, they're coming in through the, the entrance to your store. And this is what I mean about why LinkedIn is so much better than websites, because you can see them. Now on the free version of LinkedIn, you can see the last five people that have looked at your profile. So you want to be looking at this on a regular basis. Who actually is coming to my profile? A, are they the right people? And if they are the right people, what you want to do then is have a look at their profile. Mm. Very important. Have a look at their profile. Decide, do they absolutely fit the kind of person that you want to connect with? Would they would they add value to your network? So they may not be a direct opportunity per se or 
but they might be a secondary type audience kind of thing, you know, somebody who could add value. So you go in and make a decision. And then um, if they they don't and you don't want to connect or you don't want to carry on with that conversation, you just ignore them and let it go. But if it is somebody, then if they are not currently connected with you, I would reach out and say, thank you so much for popping by my profile. If there's anything I can help you with, please just let me know. Mm -hmm. something simple like that touch because what we're saying is we're using the fact that they've looked at us and they've looked at us for a reason but we don't know what that reason is so we're just wanting to kind of oh you know when you open the door and go oh hello how can I help you we want to kind of take that kind of approach so I would always use that as it's a great reason to go and connect with someone and it's can be one of the quickest ways to generate leads on LinkedIn for sure because Mm -hmm. if you're getting the right people coming to your profile and you do that most people will then you're inviting them somebody somebody might say well won't they they might have already sent you a connection request for sure because somebody once said well won't they reach out to you but sometimes people are a little bit you know hesitant and my view is let's just make it easy as possible oh Oh, you're talking my language Judy (laughs) absolutely and if again if we liken it to a networking event and somebody maybe came over and then walked away they might just have gone for a cup of tea they might have got but jumped on a call you know anything could have happened between them jumping uh coming to see your profile absolutely you no know, you know, it's it's nice just to again go up to them and say hi you know i've noticed you've you've, you've come to my profile what can i do to help it's yeah, so simple absolutely. i don't like i've seen some people who go uh oh you you uh looked at my profile what do you want I don't like that kind of thing. Oh, no, I don't like that either. I, I'm wanting to go, thank you for taking the time. Yeah. Thank you for popping, you know. Oh. Would be lovely, you know, is there anything I can help you with? In the meantime, would you like to connect? You know, just that kind of nice, bit more soft yeah. touch, fee kind of feeling. Because we want to build relationships here with people. Very, yeah, very this important. Is, this is it. And I've I've built so many amazing relationships. And the people that I've met and connected with you included but you know the friendships that I forged and if we just take business out of the equation and leads out of the equation the amazing connections and friendships that I forged just on LinkedIn from just commenting or popping them a quick message say how you have, can I help with anything are you okay how's your day it just goes a long way doesn't it 100% 100% you wouldn't you know somebody you know I will turn around to people and say right you'll either if you send that message to somebody's looked at your profile you'll either get no response or they'll go, thanks. Or they'll go, oh, yeah, I'm really interested in learning more about what you do. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, yeah. how, how, you know, for like a few seconds work, just to get those people going, well, actually, I wouldn't mind understanding a bit more. Could we have a chat? You know, it's just gold dust, really. It really is. And the very worst thing that could happen is them saying, no, thanks. Yeah. Which can- <laughs> you're all right you can kind of just get on with your life can't you nothing bad has happened it's perfectly okay um and what if because somebody said this to me the other day actually uh, um what if we were talking about the linkedin views let me get this question right so it it was their question not mine they were looking at the linkedin views and it was all potential suppliers people who were just trying to sell to them now, what would you say if that was the the case? Is it just a case of going back and tightening up your your profile? Yeah, I mean, I would have looked at what have they got on their profile. I mean, you're never going to get rid of that for sure. No. But this comes back to what have you got in your headline and your job title? Because if on LinkedIn, as I mentioned, you can go and find people that you want to connect with, and there will be a lot of uh, myself included. Uh-huh. I'm looking for marketing managers, so I'm sorry. I'm looking at marketing managers. So you've got yeah, a job title, marketing I'm manager. We're in that space, right? <laughs> we, we can't get offended by that because we're also doing it. That's what we're talking about today, exactly. right? Exactly. So you know, if it's you know, it is there, but um, it's I would go if it's all that that's happening is look back at your profile and say what what have what are those keywords that you've got in there and you know you're coming what's happening is that person's just coming up on supplier search results yeah. they've got a let's say the man you know somebody goes oh well, I get his recruitment and I'm going well I'm not surprised because you've got you know sales person or you've got their job title mm-hmm. and it's not your job title and you know anybody who's in sales business owners and t- included nobody wants to be sold to you're not a yeah. sales person yeah. you are an expert in something you're there to support and help and advise and guide. So it could be something as simple as just changing their 
job the headline and job title it could just be small tweaks just tightening things up right but, yes. and maybe also get somebody else to look at it oh 100 percent. Um, yes you know foggy just staring I know I've done this in the past I update my profile on a regular basis because I, I know it's important but every so often I'm like oh, I don't even know what it's saying to me anymore and so I just hand it to somebody else and say if you didn't know me what is this saying what would you what are you getting out of this profile that is fabulous Barbara and 100% agree I say that to people because the hardest thing is writing about yourself yeah. so when I when I write I write um, help people write their profile I'll go through three questions who's your audience What's their pains and challenges? What are those keywords that they would be looking at? And actually thinking, taking yourself out of the equation and it's not about you, but it's about your ideal client really helps. But it is the hardest thing to write about yourself. So you'll write it and then getting somebody to look at it who knows you, a lack of friendly person to give you that feedback it's absolutely I I always <clears throat> excuse me I always advise people to do that for sure yeah it's it's a good <clears throat> idea it? it just gives you that little bit of a relief as well um right so we've got our profile sorted we're now into posting <coughs> territory we are so actually before we jump into posting because yeah. everybody will you know everybody oh what should I post what should I post what should I post yeah. and to be fair I get that because it is an important part of LinkedIn and LinkedIn's wanting to turn us all into creators which is one of my biggest uh, bugbears with LinkedIn because we're not all creators you know yeah. it introduces creator mode and you get brownie points if you post and all this like and the other but you know for me LinkedIn is it's still I don't I've always said never listen to what LinkedIn tells you because LinkedIn you know will, t will want you to use it in the thing in a way that it thinks you want to it, you should use it where actually what we want to do is use it for what we want to use it for mm -hmm. not what LinkedIn wants us to use it for so, um, so posting, yes, is important, but not necessarily the first thing, because once you've done your profile, the next step is to look at who you're connected with. And one of the biggest mistakes that I people make is that they connect with anyone and everyone, and they have got massive, massive networks. And then when they start posting, they get nothing on their posts. And I, you know, I've, as I said, I created my account in 2006. And, you know, I've got I haven't got a massive network. I've only got about 8,000 followers. It's not massive at all. There's people with thousands and thousands of connections and followers. Uh, mine's quite minuscule in, in comparison. But I get people engaging on my content because yeah. I've built my network around the people that I that fit my ideal client profile, the people that I know, the people that I potentially want to work with, people who could potentially introduce me to other people. And, and so it's vitally important um, to have an engaged network, not the biggest and best network in the world. Now, you do need to be connected. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. You know, if you've only got 100 or 200 connections, the visibility and reach of your posts, of course, are going to be quite minimal. So you do need to build them up. But I know a lot of people, um, especially when they've changed careers, you know, they've been employed and their previous, their network is made up of all their previous type of yeah. colleagues and contacts who are no longer relevant. And they've actually benefited from culling some of their connections because now, that is the reach. Oh, now that I love that thought because that's not something that I've thought about before. So actually, so what, when you say culling, do you mean like blocking or just on? on no, not blocking. Like... Just just removing them as a connection. Right. They don't know. So this is quite a time-consuming process. Mm -hmm. So all, you know, it's not always uh, the quickest thing to do, but it's for some people it has been really beneficial and so if you um, as I say because if you're not getting the engagement so the, 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 the I'll put my teeth back in <laughs> the reason why this is important is because when you post on LinkedIn what that does when linked when you post link it's telling um, LinkedIn will only serve that post to a proportion of your network so people think that your posts go to everybody that you're connected with and it right. doesn't it only goes to a poor proportion we don't know how many that is. We don't know who it is. So if you've connected with anyone and anyone and you've got this massive network and you're getting no engagement, it's because LinkedIn is serving your post to people who have absolutely no interest in what you do or what you say. So, so important. So that's why it's important to have a network of people who are going to be interested in what we've got to say. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you, it goes, this is why knowing your audience is so important. Yes. Who is it you want to get in front of? Where are they located? What industry sectors are they in? You know, this is what we this is what we've got to be uh, front of mind, because if we don't know what who our audience is, 
we don't know what to write on a profile we don't know who to connect with and we just certainly don't know what to post mm. so first and foremost think about your your network very very important and again if we liken that to to um, face-to-face networking mm. if you think about all the networking groups there are a ton of networking groups out there how do you decide which is the best networking yeah. groups to go to and for some people there which is a really important as well for some people their ideal clients don't go networking yeah so where can they go networking um, and stuff? So it's it's very important. Um, first step is your is your connections. It's just to have that take that time. Maybe you want to just take maybe thirty minutes a week or so or a day. Or if you've got, I think all the in between moments. You know, when you're waiting for the kettle to boil, just jump on the app. Then that'd be a great time to just cull your 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 network a little bit and tighten it up. So the reverse of that, actually, in, in terms of uh, culling your network is uh, another quick way to do it is that, uh, because if you've got a network of people just random, so you haven't had a connection strategy, you just random connect, 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 connect. Yeah. And apart from the fact that we've got lots of fake profiles and dodgy people on LinkedIn, that aside, that you may have connected with as well. But what the other complaint that people have is that oh, they news and the reason this puts them puts them off LinkedIn is they go oh, I just get rubbish on my newsfeed yeah. I've just load of rubbish and I don't like it and I'm going well I'm sorry but you connected with these people this is what's going to come up so one of the quickest ways to actually start cleaning up your newsfeed and starting to cull your connections and actually go do I want to be connected with these people is when you're on your newsfeed this um if you see a post that you don't like Mm-hmm. or you go and I don't know who this person is why am I connected with them if you look at a post there's three dots three dots at the top right of a post if you click on that it comes down with a drop down menu and it gives you the opportunity to either unfollow somebody or remove the connection if they're a first degree nice. if a first degree connection has commented commented on a post that's in your second degree network yes. you're able to uh, also mute that person so you don't see them at all right so right. often, like you're saying, if you've got, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, you know, you're early for picking the kids up, for example, or you're early for a meeting or in between meetings, you've got a bit of time to kill. To scroll through your newsfeed, go and look, Do it, does this post, does this person add value? Yes mm-hmm. or no? If it's a no, click on the three dots, remove connection. Mm-hmm. And I would remove, oh, remove so the connection powerful. rather than follow. Yeah, and just, again, that that piece of advice, if you're listening to this, that's that's again gold because so often it go, it goes against everything that we've been taught in terms of casting your net wider, you know, and and maybe connecting to lots of different people. But this is about being targeted, right? This is about being super strategic um, in your business, and you're ever, you're strategic everywhere else in your business. So LinkedIn has to have a strategy as Correct. well, doesn't it? And if you think about it, for most people, if you turn around to say to them, actually, how many clients? do you need how many new clients do you need a month or a year or whatever how much do you need in your pipeline um and things like that and you you know most people I speak to they're not massive numbers you know for the individual business owners because you're swamped aren't you you can easily you, you know you want to have a manageable lead generation so people are popping into your uh, into your pipeline on a consistent basis but in a manageable way you don't want sort of like 100 in one month and nothing for the rest of the year or something ridiculous it, 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 you know so again that's why you know you've got to be really clear on who your audience is and go right who do I want to meet who do I want to get in front of mm. um, and things like that so yeah very very important I love that so so a question that's popped into my head then whilst we've called our we've created our profile we've called our, our audience or we're in the process because that's going to take some time isn't it we're calling our audience because now we've got a bit of a strategy the word algorithm is kind of yeah. popping into my head because people say that to me about you know instagram and tiktok and oh the algorithms are against me is there a danger that now we, we're kind of Faffing about your word, I love that word. I'm going to use it from now on. <laughs> you've been faffing about with your profile and faffing about with culling, and maybe you've been posting, and you're now changing from one strategy or a previous strategy or a previous process to being targeted. How can you get the algorithm back on your side, or is there a is it something we need to be bothered about? I think it's the question that I really well, want to ask. Yeah. So yes and no, I would say yes and no. So I think. For me, that it's it, LinkedIn needs a strategy. 
and the, and the, the the for me the faffing is that a lot of people will go on LinkedIn and they'll do a bit they do a bit of that and they're not getting anywhere. It's about understanding what what do I do in the time that I do have because you know again we don't have all day every day to spend on LinkedIn. Even even me, I am on LinkedIn all the time, but I'm having to work to do that as well. But you know <laughs> nobody can can spend all day every day on LinkedIn. So it's about understanding what to do in the time that you do have. Mm -hmm. And the algorithm is, is important. And this is why we need to go back and cull our connections. If it, LinkedIn isn't working for you, if your profile isn't, you know, isn't quite right. Because everything we do on LinkedIn, every action that you take on LinkedIn will send a message to the algorithm. So who you connect with, who you follow, who you engage with, uh, what groups you join, which hashtags you follow. That is telling LinkedIn, all this AI stuff out there, it's telling LinkedIn what it thinks you're interested in. So you are training. So everybody who's got all this rubbish posts on their newsfeed is because you've trained LinkedIn to give you that. So it's very important to go in and actually go and do your, do your profile, look at your connections, look at who you're engaging with. Because another thing that drives me at the wall is people go uh, and comment on posts that they don't like. And it really winds me up when people talk about the LinkedIn police, because I'm like, I've been on LinkedIn a long time and, you know, LinkedIn has changed a lot and we've got much more personable. I, I did a post back in 2014 that said from LinkedIn that said that um, white papers was the best performing posts content on LinkedIn. You know, you put a white paper on LinkedIn now and it's like. <laughs> yeah, it's Nothing. changed massively. It's changed and massively. I'm so pleased you've raised the the LinkedIn police kind of you know topic. I hate it I hate I hate people I who refer to it. their LinkedIn police I'm Me going too. I won't swear but I'm like you're if you're you know a if there's people out there like acting like that just don't comment on these chuffing posts because all you're doing is sending LinkedIn that's what you want to see more of yes um, right. that is I just want to highlight that underscore it put a big neon light around it because if you are if you are biting right correct. taking the bait and you are commenting on it all you're doing is opening the floodgates because LinkedIn will literally send you more stuff because correct. of the algorithm that's what it's designed to do yeah so just ignore and then it'll go get them <laughs> if something comes up on your on your newsfeed that's Lovely. triggers you ignore because to be honest that is so I'm going to say that LinkedIn can is a social media platform in so much that it can send these triggers you know people oh I've not got anybody following me or I haven't got enough yeah. likes on my post and all the negative stuff of yeah. social media I think so if something comes up on your newsfeed that triggers you deep breath three dots mute remove yes. connection mute do not these people are not your ideal clients if you comment on it and say something on it that you know uh, it'll just come back just ignore it life's too short it's not your audience move on get rid of them let's start having some com positive conversations oh I love that I just love everything that you've just said it's so got go uh, it's just gold the other thing on the back of that that you've said drive me up the wall Judy it's and it's not the case now is if we carry on with the just the LinkedIn police topic just for a tad longer is I think before COVID it was very much a professional place to be right we can't everybody has to be suited and booted and you know we talk about work and anybody that didn't talk about work you know or I've had a baby or I've, it's my wedding or whatever you know life things they got shot down since COVID, certainly in my, my, from my perspective, in my opinion, that's opened up. And I love that. I think that's, that's because people are people. If you go to work and you stand at the water cooler, you talk about, you know, the football teams you like and the things that you're doing and your kids' birthday celebrations. So what, what's your view on that? Do you know, as a, for me, I like to think that LinkedIn's got more personable. Yes. Rather than personal. And I yeah. think it's about, you're right, you know, it doesn't matter what we do online, people still buy from people. Yeah. And I think, again, it comes back to who's your audience. Mm -hmm. You know, will your audience, I mean, appreciate the types of posts? And it, it, and it comes back to remembering that LinkedIn is still your professional brand. Yeah. So um, it's about, so will the posts resonate with your audience? and so and I, I think there still needs to be context and purpose around post so just say so for example it's snowing so you know oh it's March and it's snowing mm. you know 
so chuffing what? You know what I mean? Exactly. But, what's the what's yeah, meaning? It, what, so that is a, you know, that would be for Facebook. You know, what, what, what's the context and purpose around that? Yeah. But if we can bring it back into and have a purpose for it, even if it is just to say, I'm sorry, you won't have heard of me from a while, but, you know, I've just got my new job and it's a picture of your baby. People love and it's easy to engage yeah. with it and people love it and, and stuff like that. But if that's all you're doing, obviously you're not having that many babies, but if all you're doing is that yeah. kind of, yeah. it, it will very quickly get very boring. Yes. So I think that you still have to be vulnerable. You still have to have some personality. You still have to show that you're a real person and you still need to sort of uh, build those sort of relationships. But it's not about doing it all the time. In my opinion, we still need to talk about how we help people and and yeah. things like that and I like these posts I call them posts that say what you do without saying what you do so yes. I will do posts where I've been a picture of me training so one of my recent posts I said on Valentine's Day I do it every year Valentine's Day because that's my anniversary of having started my account. Yeah. and what I did this year was a picture of me training and I don't go in and said if you want LinkedIn training come to me but I've got a picture of me training and going, can you believe it? That, you know, all these years ago, I set up an account. I'm celebrating 10 years and I put a story around it. Mm. But hey, there was a picture of me. I got permission from the client, a picture of me training these, this client, doing LinkedIn training. But I'm not saying I do LinkedIn training. I'm saying I directly go and get your LinkedIn training. So for me, it's, it's stories, 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 stories. Yeah. How can you make it? purposeful add context think about your audience will they appreciate it I did mm -hmm. one recently the fact that I've, I've um it was world hearing day so I use yeah. that as a story because I I've read that yeah, yeah read so that you know that I have to wear hearing aids and stuff so that's mm -hmm. quite vulnerable and personal for me I'm not a naturally vulnerable and uh, well yeah, everybody's vulnerable so I'm not naturally inclined to put those sorts of things out there yeah. but I was able to tie it up in a story in a purpose and a reason and that for me is where you get the most engagement and value yeah, yeah it's whether people it's helping people to relate to you yeah okay. I I love that the the other thing that I like to do as well and you've um that posted it perfectly for me when I read that is I looked at I look at what I like to read so what is it that stops me Correct. and then I think I read it enjoy it comment and then I kind of take a step back and go what was it about that yeah. that I liked what yes. made me like stop in my tracks and usually for me personally it's a story I love a story I love people I love learning about people so it's 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 more that, about the person than it is about the topic. Correct. Absolutely, Barbara. And, and a lot of people will be scared of posting on LinkedIn. And so right, that's where I, I tell people to, to start. Yeah. It's look, OK, start with your newsfeed, because engaging for me is even more important than posting. Mm -hmm. I actually don't post that much, right. but I engage daily. But actually, if you start by looking at what people are posting, and as we said, if you don't like it, get rid of it. But as you start to tell LinkedIn what you do like, stop look go go through your newsfeed what actually is making you stop what is it about that post mm -hmm. what is it that you're interested in that you can relate to and things like that and it's a great place to start with with LinkedIn definitely oh, I, I completely agree and and make that that first sentence really powerful I think so that'll that'll that's your hook isn't it it is it's your hook and but you know so it's it's interesting because there's lots of ways to post things on LinkedIn and do things in different ways but you know it's and that's why it's important to see what what ha actually is stopping you when you're on yeah. your own it often be this maybe because you know them and you know how yeah. nice is it just to engage on somebody else's post you know, really and support them support your network support the people that you network face to face with you know yeah because you, you just mentioned and I get I want to just jump back to that engaging is more important than posting yeah so how often how often should you post then if if engaging is more important and is there a minimum number or if we're going to be really strategic what or is it just do it for I don't know 10 minutes what's what's you well, the right answer? how long is a piece of string and I think this is where I talk about you know it's important to know what to do in the time you have on LinkedIn it's yeah. not you know how long you spend on LinkedIn it's what you do in the time that you've got that's really important and that's for me is all about having a plan of action and a strategy and knowing starting with why you're on LinkedIn who's your audience where are they on LinkedIn how are we going to get in front of them and then what are those activities that we're going to do that's going to raise our visibility in front of them and things like that so that's the whole 
kind of um, planning action. But, you know, for me, engaging should make up uh, probably 80% at least of your time on LinkedIn, mm. uh, for sure. Posting um, is once a day or two or three times a week or at least once a week. So you're better to be consistent and do it less mm. than to do posts, like five posts one week and then nothing for a month. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But um, you, you and post to an extent, but uh, it's, as I say, once a week versus daily for engaging. And it takes the pressure off because so many people, in, in certainly in my audience, will struggle with that fear of visibility, you know, of um, struggling with the what do what do I actually post? And I'm scared to put things out there. And and um, so even if it's twice a week, it's something it's you know, that's a nice, easy it's way. Absolutely into absolutely fine. And I go on the basis of twice a week. That's what I do. Yeah. I, go, I look to post twice a week. I might sometimes post a. Uh, on a weekend so on a weekend mm. I will post more personal posts if you like kind yeah. of because I go it's not work and you get a different audience I think on a weekend again it depends on your audience and when they're active but you know twice a week is absolutely fine there's no need to even once a week you know there's mm. no need to sort of worry about having lots and lots of content and people have probably got a lot more content than they realize um, yeah. But if they're afraid of posting, if you go in and start engaging first and actually instead of going in and, and looking at somebody's posts and going, that's really nice, depending on what the post is, if you can add something of value to that post and contribute. So, again, think of the face to face conversations. So if, you know, if, if you're having uh, a conversation face to face, you, you would normally say more than, oh, good job, Barbara. You, yeah. you might go, I really enjoyed that piece you did the other day on XYZ. What was, you, you, do you know what I mean? We want to try and, and often that mini post, that, that commenting is like mini posting and just gets you over that initial hurled, hurdle. Yeah, you're so right. And it, it, it just, it's an, a nice, easy way in, isn't it? Uh, but oh, I, I think that's so, such a valuable thing to, valuable thing to talk about, but also a really good habit to get into. Yeah, it is. Um, just do it every single day. I just, I have just done that, Barbara. Sorry. So I just done that. But I don't, so I've just said that I don't post that often. I'm not a prolific content creator at all. I really struggle with content. And I, I'm, I'm your typical kind of person that can be a bit over. I've got loads, but I'm going, oh, God, what am I going to talk about? So I'm not a prolific content creator at all. But I engage daily and people say, I'm, I say, oh, I'm always seeing you on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Yeah. Because I engage daily. Yeah. That's so good. And and it winds me up when people worry about posting. Don't worry about no, it. It's not no. the most important thing. I have Just to be careful yeah. saying it's not the it's not important, but it isn't the most important thing. No. Do you post on the same day every week then, or do you just post when you feel like it? Um <laughs> Uh, here's the do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. No, I don't <laughs> generally. I have um I've I've got this uh where the heck is that on LinkedIn and I haven't yet started it um I've got a few posts to go where I'm going to be doing that on a Wednesday so it'll be hashtag where the, like where the heck is that where, where the heck, heck is that on LinkedIn like you know how do oh, I remove oh, oh like a, a, a bit of yeah I tips see. and things like yeah. that so that is supposed to be a Wednesday Barbara and each Wednesday I keep forgetting <laughs> you're, like, you're like me you're like me I set off with great intentions and I have to put it in my diary in my phone to ping up and say do this today exactly and I'm still waiting for LinkedIn the scheduling feature I haven't got that yet so I'm blaming oh, LinkedIn that. have you got it I I'm like I think there's something like, going wrong I've, with LinkedIn you know what I'm me. gonna check it out because a little clock came up on my yes you've got it yes you have have I got it I haven't used it I I, I'd forgotten all about it and I thought I tell you what popped into my head to be totally honest I thought is this gonna affect my reach you know if I'm scheduling but also the on the back of that it stops me from engaging because if I've scheduled then I'm not actually on it whereas I post my habit is I post and then I, I comment and I'll just like chat in yeah but um if I'm scheduling, then I think it'll take me away from it. So I haven't it's, touched it's it. In, it's interesting. So one of the things I have got with LinkedIn is um, you can save a post. So I often what I'll do is I'll create my post. And then if you quit the window, it'll say save draft. So I've right, saved yeah. the draft. So you're right. I always like to schedule a, a sort of manually post, as it were, not use a third party. But I think yeah. because it's within LinkedIn, 
it's, it's easier yeah. we need you need to be obviously be there for when it goes live to be engaging back and stuff like that but um yeah it's I don't I don't have it yet so uh, I've yeah. I've heard it's limited which is not surprising really it's got it's oh, I'm gonna, I should feel lucky then I'm gonna play about with it before it gets taken <laughs> away they'll never give me anything new again they'll say no it's wasted on her which because I never got LinkedIn live um, oh well you have I, it now if you've got crazy okay. you'll get it now yeah but yes you had to in, you had to apply for it didn't I and I never got yeah, you it had to, and I applied for it and never got it yes and no exactly I did and never got it and then it. I went oh I've got it and then I realized it's because <laughs> I had creative my- <laughs> You have to go through a third party, don't you? Yeah, StreamYard. I use yeah, StreamYard. StreamYard. Yeah, but I've never done it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a play with all of these yeah. LinkedIn features. You've inspired me because I've just got maybe I've got into a bit of a LinkedIn rut. The last question, because I'm I'm just looking at the time. Um, the last I'm question is what, I know me too. This is just such I'm so passionate about this because this is you I'm, said something right at the very beginning that really rung true for me, and that was in the very early days of my business we're talking back in 2010 so I think you started a lot earlier than me I you had to actually buy a database oh yeah absolutely I do apologize I was just um my my laptop isn't plugging in so I'm sorry if I just disappeared then (laughs) I'm like where's my laptop um so I'm sorry I love the fact that we can have especially for people like us that work we're, we're entrepreneurs that work, business owners that work on our own most of the time, unless we're seeing clients or going networking and things. So it's a lovely place to just chat or have have connection. And I think that's it's really powerful. Um, but my last question before we talk about you and how people can work with you and find you and all the good stuff is what about groups? Are groups still alive and well? Are they worth doing? What should you create a group yeah. what do you reckon yeah so groups are so linkedin had a thing with groups so we the, you know groups have never been as good as the facebook groups I'll, I'll admit that and then linkedin decided to kill groups off completely and and stuff so uh, unfortunately um but and they're slowly slowly coming back I, I never tell people to worry about groups join groups where your clients are but groups you don't need to be posting in um, I do have a group, uh, but it's a it's an advanced um, strategy and you've got to be really using LinkedIn because you've got to be on LinkedIn and doing it. It could be it could be useful for you. But the problem is, is that, you know, the people in the group don't always get notified. You don't go to groups anymore. You know, before yeah, and you do get it, you're getting it back again now because you can see groups. If you're in a group and somebody has posted something in a group, you'll start to see those posts in your um, newsfeed but there's still very few and far between the groups are so quiet and dead at the moment there's not much activity in there it's it's they've they've killed them off and it's going to take some time to come back I think to bounce back and it maybe it's something that you can call as well if you've joined loads of groups in the past just go back and oh would you just forget about it and I just bother. I just wouldn't worry about groups you could kill some of them if you wanted to uh, again groups are kind of something that the LinkedIn algorithm will look at to an extent but I think there's other things that you do on LinkedIn that'll be more important um yeah I just wouldn't worry about groups unless of course you're in my LinkedIn loving group in which case in which case you have to go in there yeah have to go in there because you get amazing people chatting every all the time I know I've I've seen a few of them so it's very difficult you know to get engagement as a group owner it's really difficult to get a group you've got to there are some groups that are brilliant absolutely you know um the Yorkshire Mafia I haven't been in the Yorkshire Mafia group for a while that used to be a very active group but you know it, the problem with groups is that people have physically got to go to the group yes got to go and find it yeah and people don't well you haven't got time people haven't got time no oh you know what this conversation <laughs> has been full if you're not if you've just listened to it and you're just in the car or at the gym or walking the dog or something go home get yourself a notebook and pen and go through it and keep pausing I think because this is such a good episode Judy how can people work with you where can they find you um what's all what we want to know all the things yeah well, thank you uh well obviously find me on LinkedIn uh Judy Parsons a LinkedIn lady that's always the best way uh if you have listened to this please do connect with me let me know that you've listened to it and any questions or what your thoughts or feedback from the session from what we've talked about today would be wonderful for anybody if it's okay Barbara I'm actually running a workshop in Leeds 
Yes. A LinkedIn masterclass, a half day workshop on the 23rd of March. So if anybody is in Leeds and wants to get to grips with their LinkedIn plan of action, we're going to be looking at target audience, how to write your profile, looking at your content strategy, how to post on LinkedIn, and also how to have those conversations without all the icky sales stuff Amazing. going on and creating a plan of action. So if anybody's interested in that, you know, again, please connect on LinkedIn or let me know. That'd be fab. Um, but I, you know, I work with um, sales teams. I work with marketing managers. I'm loving company pages. That's a whole nother conversation for us to have on LinkedIn, LinkedIn company pages. So I'm working with marketing teams on how they can maximize those. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I work one to one group training. So yeah, hopefully that was it. Does that work? <laughs> Perfect. So um, firstly, go and find Judy on LinkedIn and connect because she's the, just such a lovely, lovely person. So you want to have her just in your on your feed anyway. But all the links that she's mentioned and maybe some more, any that you can think of since we, we've had a, had a chat, we'll put it all in the show notes. So please feel free to go and just find her and take advantage of all the brilliance that she puts out, puts out into the world. But Judy, it's an absolute pleasure as oh, always. I've loved having you on today. And thank, thank you for being so generous with your wisdom. And um, I'll, I'll see you on LinkedIn. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Barbara. <laughs>